Welcome back to Moose on the Loose. My name's David. Today we are talking RCMP, corruption at the highest levels here. Two different stories. So first off, when we've got one here is crazy. The highest bio lab in Canada. There is a, uh, in, it's an infectious disease lab. You know, when, like the bad thing that happened a couple years ago, that kind of thing. So we've got two different articles here. Um, the one on Rebel News. Basically the gist of this story, there's two Chinese scientists that were uh, fired from this bio lab and it's kept secret by the Trudeau liberals. They won't tell anyone why, they just claim it's national security. Really, that's probably not the case. You can see here in July of 2019, these two researchers were fired. The, the timing is very interesting too. I'm not gonna say it, you guys can just look. July 2019, what happened in 19, uh, just three months after this happened. Coincidence, I don't know, I don't know, man. Uh, they lost their security clearances with the National Microbiology Laboratory in Winnipeg after they leaked confidential information to China. So this is the building here. If we scroll down here, the uh, committee on February 14th, the letter to House of Commons parties urging that they declassify all information from Public Health Safety of Canada. Basically want all the documents made public. The information appears to be mostly about protecting the organization from embarrassment for failures in policy and implementation, not legitimate national security concerns, and its release is essential to hold the government to account. Justin Trudeau came back and said it's the national security uh, concerns, which is why they haven't released information. It's also said that these two Chinese scientists brought in interns from China and they don't know how they got security clearance at that highest level to deal with those uh, high level uh, bad things in that lab, but somehow it did. So one of the scientists here, his name appears on 120 scientific research papers published between 2000 and 2021. A significant number of collaborations with Chinese scientists and much of the research was funded by the Chinese government. This is seeming really dirty. This is a really dirty deal that's going on here. Subsequent reports uncovered that an RCMP probe into whether they transferred Canada's intellectual property to the Chinese government, including plasma DNA molecules that could be used to recreate viruses. Fact maintains followed all protocols in spite of shipments lacking a standard material transfer agreement to clearly outline intellectual property rights. CSIS promptly urged the federal health agency to revoke the pair's security clearances both scientists received an official dismissal in January 2021. Four months before their expulsion, there was an access to information request for the two exceptionally virulent strains of Ebola and Hennepha viruses to the Wuhan facility. Wuhan? Have you heard that name before? <laughs> Do I need to say anything else? Do I need to say anything else? So this is being... Uh, not properly investigated by the RCMP. The Trudeau liberals, liberals hiding this, slipping it under the rug. It seems Justin Trudeau is nice and cozy with uh, Pooh Bear. If Xi Jinping didn't think he was not going to make it into this episode to be compared to Pooh Bear, he's sadly mistaken. <laughs> There's too many of these. <laughs> There's a really good one with Obama. Yeah, that's the one. That That's the best one. Yeah, there we go. That is the best one you're going to find on the internet. <laughs> really, we need an updated one here with Justin Trudeau, because that's where who's really uh, tied to Xi Jinping here. And another scandal that's going on, you're getting a two for one here. We've got this SNC Love and Law sca scandal here. So the RCMP, they were there to testify before. The Liberals blocked it. They're back, and they're actually being uh, questioned now by Michael Cooper, who does a good job. Let's check this out. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you to the witnesses. A part of the RCMP's examination to determine whether the Prime Minister uh, violated Section 139, Sub 2 of Criminal Code by committing obstruction of justice, correct? That was part of the RCMP's examination. That's correct, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Yeah. And paragraph 19 of the RCMP investigation report states that the strongest theory towards an offense of obstruction of justice was that the Prime Minister shuffled Jody Wilson-Raybould out of the position of Attorney General so that a new Attorney General would make a different decision regarding the prosecution of SNC-Lavalin, correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. And it's fair to say that the RCMP did not have access to all material evidence surrounding Ms. Wilson-Raybould being shuffled out as Attorney General, correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. 
And so, uh, just to clarify then or emphasize, the RCMP did not have access to all material evidence on the strongest theory surrounding the Prime Minister's potential criminality involving obstruction of justice, correct? That's correct, no. Mr. Chair. And the reason the RCMP did not have access to that material evidence on what was central to determining whether the Prime Minister broke the law was because of the parameters of the scope of the order of counsel with respect to the waiver of cabinet confidentiality, correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. The parameters did not allow us to fully look into this one. However, I should th uh, just th add Thank you for that. You answered it. The parameters did not allow you to uh, get that evidence. Now, uh, there is one person who had the authority to expand the parameters of that order in council, and that is the Prime Minister himself, correct? Yeah. I would have to say, Mr. Chair, I'm not exactly sure of the exact process of where the Prime Minister would be involved in such a decision. Uh, however, I, I do believe the decision has to be made within the uh, somewhere within the government. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would submit the decision would have to be made by the Prime Minister, but the RCMP uh, went and requested an expansion of the scope to obtain that evidence, to follow that evidence, correct? Before we proceeded with the assessment, yes, we did make a request for an expansion uh, to the parameters. I, I, I would just say so just to, if you're not familiar with what's going on here, so snc Lavala scandal, the RCMP tried to get more information. Justin Trudeau turned them down, blocked them out, would not give them the documentation. That's what's going on here. So Mr. Cooper, it was not to follow the evidence. It's to glean additional information. That could be evidence. Correct. And uh, that request was turned down on August 30th, 2019. I would have to say, Mr. Chair, that the request for the expansion was uh, it, was not allowed. It, it was turned down, and it was turned down by the PCO, the Prime Minister's Department, correct? Uh, we, Mr. Chair, we did receive a letter from the Department of Justice. Uh, I, I could not remember exactly, specifically, if this came from the... Yeah. Well, it, it was from the PCO, and that's in the RCMP's investigation report, and uh, would it be fair to say that the refusal by the Prime Minister's personal department, the PCO, to expand the scope of the Order and Council significantly impeded the full investigation into the Prime Minister's potential obstruction of justice. It limited our capability of pursuing a, a full investigation. They're trying to dance around it a little bit, but yeah, they're basically, yeah, we couldn't get the documents. They're, he's basically saying we couldn't get the documents. We don't know if it's evidence, but it might be evidence, but we don't know if it's evidence. And it would have limited it in a fairly significant way. Because after all, we're talking about going to the heart of the matter of obstruction. And, and again, I, I don't know what additional, not knowing what additional information is out there, it's hard for me to speculate that if there's a Pandora box out there which is full of information, so it's hard for us without speculating. Well, let the record show that the Prime Minister's Department, the PCO, obstructed the RCMP investigation into the Prime Minister's potential obstruction of justice. Are you aware of any other Canadian who can single-handedly block the RCMP from investigating his own criminality in such an effective way as the Prime Minister. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use the term, Mr. Pl Mr. President, I wouldn't use the term block. The RCMP is when it runs an investigation and operates within the parameters and the regulations that we're allowed to. And we see international security investigation as well, where there's some information that we don't have access to, we can't use into an investigation. So. It's the it's the parameters it's the it's the parameters that we are. Answer, I, I think I think the answer to that question is there is no one who has such <laughs> yeah. powers. And was any explanation provided by the prime minister's personal department why there was this refusal to expand the scope of the order in council? Again, Mr. Chair, as far as for a response on this one, of course, it was indicated. Of course, uh, the. Um, the importance, of course, of these privileges that do exist. Uh, they are there for a reason. And uh, again, uh, as the Commissioner mentioned, well, we it, do have to operate within these parameters. It, it would seem to me to be part of a pattern of a cover-up. That's right. 
That's what it would <laughs> seem to me to be. How can the Prime Minister be subject to the rule of law, like every other Canadian, if his personal department can shield him from an RCMP criminal investigation? Yeah, well said. Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll let uh, individuals draw their own conclusion. What I, what I come back to is we operate within a set of regulations and parameters that, unfortunately, we did. We made the effort to go and get additional information, and it was refused. Thank you, a Commissioner. Thank you. Of justice, I Thank would you. Say. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. <laughs> Michael Barrett there is definitely chomping at the bit. He wanted to get in on that. I think Michael Cooper did a great job at asking those questions, getting clear, concise answers. Those RCMP, it's hard to know which ones are corrupt and which ones are not. It's become quite clear, and you've heard it from numerous inside sources, that members of the RCMP at the top are very corrupt. They're serving Justin Trudeau. They're paid off. They're bought. They're all these different things. And we need a complete cleaning of the RCMP, clean out all the rats, all the filth. And are these two guys corrupt? I don't know. Who knows? They, they seem timid, like they only want to answer things very legally so they're not going to get caught up. Because, I mean, if they're looking at all the other stuff that's going on, you know, you got the Arrive, you got the Arrive Can scam. You know, you got those two guys, Antonio Utano and uh, what's his name? Cameron McDonald. Those two guys are now like taking the fall for that whole Arrive Can scam. Uh, at least the liberals are trying to, it seems they're trying to make them take the fall for it. So obviously these RCMP guys aren't, don't want to get involved in anything. They're just trying to like be really within the lines here. It's just another day, another scandal with Justin Trudeau. We got two scandals here, both RCMP, one with China. <laughs> I wish Canada was how it was when I was a kid. We went out and rode our bikes. There's no cell phones. We are just, you know, you grow up in a land where it's like you work hard and you, you get rewarded for it. And it just seems that has been all been taken away. Canada is turning into a third world nation. I said it. No one wants to think about it. It is. It's true. Because what is a first world nation? First world nation is where the country has resources and, and everyone is benefiting. Everyone is financially doing well because the country is rich. You look at a, a place like Dubai. Now, I don't know a lot about that place, but they have so much oil money. Like, look at all the stuff they build. It is outrageous. They build outrageous buildings. They're not even building a lot and big buildings. They're building the most, the biggest this, the biggest that. There's so much money. And obviously there's a lot of people that are prospering. I don't know if it trickles all the way down to the bottom, but that's just what came to mind at first because their entire land, their entire city has changed so much since they started getting all that oil money. And even if you look at China since we're already talking about China, they built their entire high-speed rail network in a matter of 12 years from like 2008 to 2020. Let's get a picture. Like, look at this, 2008, here's their high-speed rail. We're talking high-speed rail. We're talking bullet trains. I took a bullet train in uh, Taiwan, where it's actually right down here, Taiwan, which is a country, sorry, China. <laughs> it's not part of China. I took a high-speed rail from this side. Can you see my mouse? Yeah, from that side all the way down to the bottom there. And it took like three hours to cross the entire country. And it was wild. You're going at 300 kilometers an hour. And that thing just rips. And that's what they have here. These are all high-speed rail. And look how much this has changed in 12 years. You're talking about construction and getting the job done. Like China knows how to do that. It's just crazy. They've mapped out their entire country with these high-speed rail. They built it up from scratch. And like, what are we doing in Canada? And like, same thing, America. Like, what are we doing? Nothing. It's absolutely nothing. This is not a first world nation anymore. People are, are suffering. People are in streets. People are, can't afford food. Everything's bursting at the seams. The doctors, there's stories, doctors coming out who are shutting down their practices because they, there's too many taxes. There's too many this and that. They can't even afford it. Doctors can't even afford it. They're shutting down their businesses and just going to work for hospitals. It's so much easier, cheaper for them. They don't have to deal with any of the paperwork and all those extra costs of having a clinic. Canada is in a bad state. I just worry what our country will be in a year and a bit, a year and a half when Trudeau is finally out the door. Like, will it be able to be fixed? And how many more millions of people will be in this country? It's, it's time to shut the door like tomorrow, like yesterday, like immediately no more in the country for the next five to ten years until we fix this mess and we should put in a rule that bans anyone with the name of trudeau that can never be prime minister ever again <laughs> let's be honest thanks for watching here to the end of the video i greatly appreciate all of you sticking around watching my videos uh if you want to subscribe here turn on the bell notification get notified of my videos and follow me on x because I'll do another video on this, but the, the online harms bill that's come out, Justin Trudeau putting in these draconian laws where basically he'll be able to 
silence anyone and put anyone in jail for life and seventy thousand dollar fine and all this crap that's coming down next week which means me and any other creators on here we might just disappear and we'll all be in jail and no one will know what happens because you know if his law passes it's it's scary so follow me on x because that's the only place that has true freedom of speech stay warm stay fed i'll see you guys in the next one